mid-major and where I come from, Augusta, many kids, you know, it's not just a high-profile city, so um, I went into it with open minds, ready to learn. I worked out with Milwaukee, and I heard from um, Charlotte, Atlanta, Miami, Orlando, and Utah. I learned about the little stuff, like looking people in the eye, and firm handshake, you know, talking, be outgoing. Um, that's the little stuff, and, you know, the basketball aspect of it was, I mean, it was, I did pretty good. They gave me good feedback, you know, great feedback. And I decided I wanted to do another year because I believe in, I believe basketball gonna stop one day and then you gotta have something to fall back on. I think the degree is more valuable than going pro right now. So that's why I decided to come, come back and uh, I like our chances. Christian reminds me of Aaron Anderson being forced because whenever he takes, takes the court, there's no size, there's no speed, there's no limit as far as uh, backing away from competition. If you step on the court, um, he's willing to guard you. He's going to give you everything that he got um, from day one. Also, he was fearless in the classroom, took AP classes and uh, truly excelled going into his senior year. You know, he didn't just have basketball offers on, on the table. He had several um, academic scholarships and, you know, seemed like he came almost every day asking to fill out a recommendation for a, um, for an academic scholarship. So he is and was and always been a scholar athlete first. As a matter of fact, he's on, on schedule to graduate in three years. I want to go to like, somewhere that I knew I was going um, I was going to grow spiritually, which is a, it's a Christian school. Like, where I was going to grow academically and athletically. You know, that was the biggest one. The spiritual part was probably the biggest one about it. And, uh, you know, my family wanted me to, uh, to like, want to go to church and stuff. And, and you got to go to church there. So, you know, that, and it was close to home. I mean, I could have went off, you know, farther, but I wanted to go close to home. So my people could see me play. And then the coaches, they were just, you know, they, they kept it 100 with me. They just told me, like, uh, I'm going to come in, you can do, your, do your job, and I'm going to play. Stuff like that. So that's really about it. My name is Marquis Sumner, I'm junior at Stetson University. Shout out to Hoop Dealers. Right now we're gonna head to like where I grew up most of my life at, uh, Harrisburg. You know, it's not. Um, you know, I think it's one of the best place, places in the world. It's pretty much this is pretty much we went down at right here. You know. Um, I used to be on Sundays. I used to hear the pastor from my room and stuff. And he, had to, he had to try to, uh, my mom used to shut the door at 12. You can't get in there at 12. You had to, had to uh, sit in the little screen door until she was ready to open the door and stuff. You know, uh, it was just cool, you know. Nice neighborhood, but probably I really, I'm at take y'all where I probably started like, I used to really start playing basketball like with my, uh, my childhood friends and stuff. Outside court. You ain't got no full court or nothing like that. You just half court, plug it, stuff like that. Um, you know, this is where it all pretty much started out for me. You know, um, when it comes to basketball and toughness, and, you know, because you know, everybody, everybody grew up different, and I feel like 
I feel like, I mean, if you come from Harrisburg, the lake, all that, you know, it's, we breathe different, you know. So this is my, um, one of my best friends growing up, man. This came, man. You can talk to him, man. What's going on, man? <laughs> so, uh, me and Crystal, we just grew up together. Beat, bro, knock out and all that. I, I remember all that. Boy, he beat me one time. Who else beat you, though? <laughs> coming from, we, where we coming from? All the influence. Either you gonna go this way or that way, or it's more options, but a lot of people like get real then to the wrong what wrong thing. And it really separate the boy from men, thinking thinking like on your own, things like that. His mother and I became very good friends because Christian and Zepp started playing basketball in middle school. We became very close. At the time, um, as the years progressed, she got real, very sick. That was around Christian's, I want to say, junior, between junior and senior year. Me and her talked, and she um, told me to like look out, look out for Christian, take care of him because he's always over my house. Christian. He's a good young man, and I, I know he's going to make it very far in life. I know that for a fact. I know sometimes it's, it gets hard for Christian. Um, I know he go through his moments, you know, where he's missing his mom. If he try to get off on the wrong track, I'd be like, your mom looking at you. He got a good support system. His auntie, he got his auntie love him. He got his father, his brothers. You know, that you know, I know they're not here, but he's in good hands with his auntie. And he's in good hands with us. Here's my uh, summer going to my my senior year matter of fact, um round about start it started off, um, my my mama went to um and to the doctor, she said her side was hurting her, her stomach was hurting her. Uh, she was like, I'm going to go to the doctor. And so I get a call, she said, I got to stay overnight. They got to do some, some tests. So I go visit her in the hospital because I just came off, of, uh, off, off the road because we was doing season my 11th grade year. And she was like, uh, I got stage one cancer. So, uh, you know, I didn't really think nothing of it. thought it was, you know, you know, just survive for it because it wasn't so severe. So my mom was just telling me to focus on school, focus on focus on my grades, finish strong, stuff like that. So we seen her cut her hair, you know, she had to cut her hair because of the chemo. So I was like, it really hit me when I seen that. I was like, mom, you okay? Do you need me to stop going to school? Do you need to stop, stop me doing what I need to do just to help you? Um, I know it's times it's hard and stuff. She got real skinny, then put it right back on, got skinny. So. Then we had to move out the house because she wasn't working, so we had to move in with my auntie. And uh, it just got, that's when it got really bad, you know. Um, I was thinking, like, Kelly asked mama, um, do she want me to stay home with her? Do, do I need to be at school? She was like, no, keep going. So we got, we was in the springtime, it was like AAU season, and like, she was real bad. Um, it was one week, we had to go for, leave for like a whole week during the live period. We had to go to Kentucky and stuff. So I was like, Mom, I don't have to go to the tournament. I stay here and take care of you because I had to make sure her meds and make sure she took her medicine, make sure she used the bathroom every day. So she was fine. She was walking. Uh, called her when I got my first scholarship offer. Told her I was, she was happy, you know, da da da. Telling me what, what school she thought I would be fit for and stuff like that. So I hung up, told her I love her. Last time I talked to my mom. Uh, I came back home. It was a Sunday. I seen cars outside my auntie's house. You know, I seen everybody in the living room. As soon as I walked through the door, everybody was like, uh, Christian, uh, let me hug you, let me hold you. Uh, let me walk you back to the back room. So I put my stuff down in my room. So I see my cousin on his knees crying over my mom, stuff like that. Um, I never seen my cousin cry. Uh, I never seen Keith cry. So my auntie grabbed me and she took me in there. Um, my mom was fighting her breathing. You know, she was on taking the last breath. Um, I, I, I just froze, I didn't know um, what was going on. 
So being my mom being a strong woman, and she knew how much I cared for her. So she knew if she would have told me it was stage four or anything severe, I would have stopped playing basketball, stopped going to school. So uh, come to find out, she had stage four the whole time. She didn't want to tell me because she wanted me to stay focused. And she looked, she looked at the bigger picture for me. That's why I thank her because um, she really set it up for me because if I knew she had stage four, I mean, I would have stopped it regardless of what she had said. So they just basically, I ain't gonna say it was a lie, but they just protected me, uh, kept me focused. Um, everybody, the doctor said it was stage one, you know, just, it's gonna be okay. Um, she was, um, uh, she was taking the last breath. I asked everybody, can I leave the room? So I just slept with her, cause I knew she was eventually was about to die. So I uh, just slept with her, woke up at, at uh, three o'clock at, at 3.33 p.m. on April on April 13th, which is my grandmother's birthday. She passed away, so I mean, uh, that's, when, that's when a lot of thoughts, um, you know, you question, question God, you know, why you take my mom? Maybe it was because of me, maybe because of, I was not a good enough child or stuff like that, but that's when um, I had to believe in my faith, and I think God had a plan for it. It kind of humbled me so much. It humbled me so much to that it made me go harder in the classroom, made me go harder in life, made me go harder on the basketball court, and eventually got me to where I was now. And um, just all the good memories, and even the bad memories of me and my mom, it just it floats in my head every time I'm on the court, because uh, she used to be at every game, every game, every game. Depending if she had to take off work, go through a lunch break, she would be there. Um, it's, it was definitely hard. Um, I couldn't really eat. Um, I was strong though. I put on a strong front. It was hurting. I was some nights I couldn't go to sleep. Some nights I used to uh, just listen to a voicemail she sent me from a long time ago to go wash the dishes, clean the house, and it just made me laugh. Uh, so I come out here every time I come home. Um, just to come see her, talk to her, you know, because I know her spirit is still living through me. I, I give great appreciation to my auntie, my mom's sister. Um, she took me in. Um, she 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 reminded me so much of my mother. That is like I'm I'm living with her still. Uh, she got me through high school. Now she with me to college. You know, she's she's my she's my rock, man. Without her taking me in, I mean. I probably would be stranded, you know, out there. But I love it so much. My auntie is a huge part of my success, and shoot, I should give most of it to her. Um, her and her and my uncle Kendrick, you know. So, um, but my mom was she was tough, man. She raised she raised two boys, three boys. Um, she taught us the ins and outs of how to make it. Um, taught us, you know, keep our hair strong. I mean. We didn't have the best upbringing. She did the best she could do, worked three jobs, you know, day in, day out, slaving, just slaving, just to make sure we had food on the table, make sure we had, you know, good clothes on us, and good shoes and stuff like that, you know, put us in, put us in, kept us active in sports and different camps and stuff like that, so we won't be wandering the streets. I mean, she just, she's taught me different values, man. I mean, I mean, what a, it just, it just, it just probably, it's probably the one thing that hurts me. You know, it's you know I could talk about it pretty strongly because I know I know I, would, I had we had a strong bond. But you know, just thinking about it, like when people uh, like friends, when my friends be talking to their mom any type of way, or you know, getting mad at your mom, I'm like bro, appreciate your mom because you know tomorrow she might not be there. So I mean, that's why I tell I try to tell everybody, tell your people, your loved ones, you love them because that might be the last time you talk to him. What I live by is perseverance. If you can persevere, do anything, you're good. God won't put stuff on you that you can't bear. So I think this is part of God's plan. You know, it's part of my story and, and I love it, you know. But um, it's tough, it's tough. It's real tough, man. It's real tough to lose your mom at a young age. So.